Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. So I've been asked hundreds of times in the comments, people say, how much money do you make? And I would kind of grow up being taught that that's rude to ask someone, but I realized being a YouTuber that, you know, you kind of open your life up to some things that normally people wouldn't ask you, and that's fine. But I think often when people ask that question, it's always geared more towards a specific well. You know, I'll be working on a well, I'll say this well makes a barrel or two or something. And, and people are genuinely curious, how much money does that well make? And I think that that absolutely is a reasonable question to ask. And the truth is, is that's, that's an unanswerable question. And I would like to explain in this video why it's, it is an unanswerable question, at least, at least an average. And I've had several people get, you know, get kind of pissy about it and be like, you know, you know dang well exactly how many, how much you make per barrel or, you know, take how many barrels you made last year and divide it by how much money you made. That's how much you make per barrel. And as I say, I would like to explain exactly why that's not true and why it is really complicated and, uh, and something worth talking about. So I got a, this little well right here. Uh, I would like to do a test on it. We're gonna figure out exactly how much oil this thing is making. I had in, in my head, I have done this years ago and had determined that this well made between about a fourth and a seventh of a barrel of oil per day. Uh, and it's probably one of the lowest producing wells that I have that I'm not going to plug, that I'm going to keep, and I'd like to explain how this all shakes out in the, uh, you know, shakes out in the books. I'd also like to hit on another question because this is fixing to be applied to this. I get asked all the time, like people say, if you've got a well that makes a barrel or half a barrel or whatever, and you shut it down, you just let it sit there for a few years, will it, will it, you know, for the lack of a better word, will it fill back in, will it fill up, will it make more oil? And the answer to that question is generally no. And the reason is, is when I say, or someone says they've got a well that goes dry, it generally means it turned to water. Uh, it's making clear water. So this well is not exactly like that. And uh, this well has been down for several months. Uh, we had a redo the electrical, you know, we did a bunch of plumbing last week. Uh, and it is hitting higher and I can tell it's pounding fluid higher and I can tell it's making more total fluid. And I assume it's probably making more oil. Now with my SCADA system that I got running out here, I promise we're gonna to get to, but those videos are gonna be hard and difficult and a pain in the butt to make. Uh, it looked like that I picked up almost a half a barrel per day over the last about 10 days, four tenths or something like that. Uh, my system is not super accurate and, uh, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect even if that is just simply an anomaly uh, in the daily production. But that being said, this well is gonna be making more oil today than it normally does you know, in a few months if we come back. Uh, I have a feeling that probably back to you know quarter to a seventh, you know one to one and a half barrels per week. So here we got a little 18 American running probably five strokes a minute. Okay, so I got a, a long nipple and a 90 screwed in here, and what I'm going to do is start a stopwatch, open this valve, and shut this one. Now we're going to go set the pick up for 10 minutes and let it fill this bucket up, and we're going to time how long it takes it to make five gallons. So in the meanwhile, while it's filling this bucket up, I've got this crack pipe looking contraption and we're going to stick this in here and fill this up out of the well. So I'm often asked too, people say, hey, do you have any wells that make gas or why don't you have the backside tied in? The wells that we have around here make virtually no gas and you can see what's coming out the tube in here. Uh, this is less gassy than a Coca-Cola for sure. Or just, uh, we just produce very little gas. I'm not sure how good you can see here, but right here is the oil water contact line. This is water, this is oil. If we measure this, we've got about two and a quarter inches of oil on top of this water. Remember that number. Let's dump this back in here for our timer timing. So quite a few years ago, when I bought that, that thing to check oil cuts, I did some mathematical calculations and came up with about two thirds of an inch of oil, and the top of that is equal to 1% of its total volume. So if we take 2.25 inches divided by 0.66, that gives us 3.4% oil cut. So this well is making 3.4% oil and 96.6% water. It's sitting quiet there, I'm gonna call it, we're gonna say 11 and a quarter minutes for five gallons of fluid. All right, let's do a little bit of math in here. So five gallons divided by 11.25 minutes is 0.444 gallons per minute times 60 times 24 is 640 gallons of fluid a day divided by 42 is 15 barrels total fluid per day times 0.034 percent is 0.518 barrels of oil this thing's making half a barrel of oil 
which is interesting because that's what the computer said. So let's uh, let's finish this up here in the studio. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that. Let's uh, let's break down and actually start talking about financial numbers. I'm going to use this scenario that this thing makes a quarter of a barrel per day, um, 365 days a year. So when I break down and try to come up with you know financial numbers of how much actual cash does this well make, how much does it generate, uh, I use a number that's about 65% of every dollar that this thing makes, I get about 65 cents uh, that I get to use to pay bills and pay electric bills and maintenance and, 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 and you know and everything. And where this goes is this is a 7 8 lease, so 12.5% out of every dollar, 12.5 cents goes to the mineral owners. A lot of times this is a lower percentage, it's uh, a lot of leases are 80% instead of 87.5. And, and 80% is probably more common. That's kind of where my my uh, my head defaults, if you would, to the percentages. You've got a production tax, and then you end up, well, we pay an extremely high amount of property taxes. And when you add the property tax, the production tax, and how much the mineral owners get, uh, pretty much as a good round number out of every dollar that, uh, that this thing makes, we're going to get about 65 cents. All right, let's see if we can throw a... Uh, profit expense calculation together really crudely and quickly on this on this particular well. So if we've got a quarter of a barrel times 365, 91 barrels a year, times $70 a barrel, uh, times 0.65% for my part of it, $4,151. So the first uh, big expense is electricity. This thing's got a one horse motor on it. It probably pulls about 800 watts when it starts the upstroke. Uh, probably most of the downstroke are pretty much free wheels. I'm going to say that the average consumption of this is probably about 400 watts. So let's do uh, electrical calculation here. So we got at 400 watts times 24 is 9.6 kilowatt hours per day. Times 365 is 3,504 kilowatt hours per year. Uh, our cost is 3.8 cents plus 2 point something for the delivery charge. Um, Let's multiply this times uh, 0 0.06 cents per kilowatt hour. It's $210 per year. Maintenance. <clears throat> this thing, about every seven or eight years, has got to have a full blown uh, pull the tubing, test the tubing, blow half the tubing up, buy some more tubing. There's going to be about two more times in here it'll need a pump change. Uh, the downhole cost, I think I might have overshot here. I'm going to say $4,000 for a tube-in job, plus $800 for a pump change, plus $800 for a pump change. That's $5,600, and let's say this lasts seven years. This will give us kind of more of a worst-case situation. All right, so that's $800. Now, along with these expenses, I'm going to add another $500 per year for other total maintenance. Uh, this buys some packing uh, once a year. This buys us a few belts. Uh, this buys us a motor every year or two when the lightning gets it, plus some grease. Uh, and then I want to say also that that includes a little bit of my time. This does not require much time. Maybe every other month, it might take 15 minutes or something to grease it, check the oil in it, tighten the pack in, something like that. I would say it's probably somewhere in the 15 minutes a month type, type scenario. And so there's not a lot of my time in this. Okay, so here are the numbers I've come up with. At $50 oil, that's a profit of about $1,450. At $70 oil, it's $2,600. At $100 oil, it's $4,420. Uh, these are obviously very rough numbers and very rough calculations. Uh, but this does give a reasonable idea, and I do think that these expenses and income are, are reasonably accurate. An another aspect that makes this well so cheap to operate is that, one, it's actually the closest well to the county road. You have to drive by it every day driving in a lease. The other thing is, is the injection wells we've got. We don't have to pump our water under a lot of pressure. Uh, they basically take everything on gravity. But the water tank level just sort of stays full. You know, sometimes the pump comes on and pumps it down a little bit, and it'll go three or four days, and then it might actually gravity and catch up, empty the water tank. It'll kind of suck some air and airlock the injection system, and then it fills up real quick, and the pump kicks on. And you know, there's just there's very little horsepower. There's very little electricity used in disposing of this water, and so disposing of you know 10 barrels of water, you know, the cost is you know completely negligible uh, when you when you factor in 
you know, having the other wells to maintain that, uh, maintain that system. All right, for me, this is the next day. I shot the next segment out there on location, and I really did a poor job of it. And I want to, uh, I want to rerun it. I'm going to cut in part of it. Let's watch it right now, and then we'll come back and finish it up. Now, this is a very simple, very basic, minimal setup. Uh, we've got an oil tank, separator, water tank, water pump. We've talked about the separator before. The fluid comes in the back of the separator. The oil goes in the oil tank. The water goes in the water tank. It's got a head switch. The head switch, when the, when the fluid gets high enough, turns the pump on via contactor, and the pump pumps it down an injection well. I got a couple of videos coming up about injection wells. So I'll ask a million questions, and I'm going to answer it, but that's for another day. This tank costs $19,000. It's a few years old. I think that cost about $6,500. I'm not sure what a water tank cost. I'd five or six, eight thousand bucks. A little 3211 piece of crap like this is probably a used one. It'd be at least $7,500. That's usually about what it costs to rebuild them. <clears throat> I actually bought a new head switch today. I had this quoted. This cost $1,050. This cost $860. I think those are about four or $500. One of the really key components of this video that I wanted to, to try to drive home was that <clears throat> This little well is crappy and as little as it makes and everything else, it's going to make a little bit of money. But this well could never, in a million years, ever pay for all that equipment. It's just not possible. There's not enough money there uh, to be passed out to buy that stuff, much less actually make a profit. Um, key component, what I wanted y'all to understand is if you've got a well that makes a little bit of money, it does not necessarily mean that your lease will be profitable. The only reason that that well is able, I'm able to keep that well and produce it is because there's two other wells that are, you know, as I explained in the previous video, they're about 6,000 feet across the pasture, about a mile away. Uh, they make two barrels each. They make four barrels out of two wells. And those two wells pay for all that equipment. You know, if that, if that little American was plugged and gone, that lease would still make money. And so you add that little American back, and, and it adds, you know, a couple thousand to three thousand dollars at the end of the year, uh, additional profit to that lease. You know, those other two wells pay for the road maintenance. They pay for the, you know, all the equipment there. They pay for the electrical infrastructure. Um, they pay for, you know, fill in the blank, whatever. They make that work. Point I wanted to make, I'm going to say it one more time. Just because a well makes money, doesn't mean the lease makes money. You take this one more step. Just because that lease out there makes money, if that was the only lease I owned, it doesn't mean that uh, as a business I would be profitable. You know, I've got all these huge expenses like, uh, you know, big insurance policies. I've got an office. We've got to hire people to help us do paperwork to deal with the road commission, which is another stupid nightmare. Um, you know, I got to have a pickup. I got to have, you know, you, you fill in the blank. All this stuff to make a business make money. Just because at least it's profitable doesn't make make a business profitable. Uh, if you've got a business and the business will turn a little bit of money uh, and it'll pay you a paycheck, that doesn't even mean to me that you're sustainable. Because even if you can make a paycheck, you've got to be able to get ahead and have some money in the bank in case you've got some major failure, like you lose an injection well or something like that. People ask me how much money you make for barrel, and it really is an unanswerable question, and it depends uh, because every single situation, every well is different. You take that well right there, and I can say, you know, it's probably 50% profit or something to that effect. I, don't, I made that number up, I'm not sure. But you go to another well that might make a lot more oil, it's on a lease all by itself, and you've got all these expenses that are uh, that are you know combined and part of that of that um, you know that lease is infrastructure and road maintenance and etc. And uh, and it doesn't look nearly as good on paper even if the well makes a lot more oil uh, than this one. Uh, going back to the Oklahoma Jack video, it has very little overhead. The electric bill is about 300 bucks a month. Um, I pay a guy to actually go out there and check it. He goes in there several days a week. Uh, I pay him 300 bucks a month. You know I, I could run some numbers here. I'm coming up with a gross income on that lease of about 28,000 bucks. I really thought about this here for several minutes, and I come up with about a number of 10,000 bucks a year uh, expenses and maintenance. Uh, this including all the fortune I spent on electric wire and buried it a couple of years ago, uh, pressure gauge for the injection pump when it blows up once a year, packing the water pump. Uh, we had to buy a tank a couple of years ago, including kind of long-term expenses. Uh, you know, doing a tubing leak on one of the wells. You know, a little bit of well servicing, uh, grease a bucket of oil for the for the unit. This comes out to something to me about about ten thousand bucks a year, and so we take thirty six hundred dollars a year electricity, thirty six hundred dollars in labor, the pumper, the guy that checks it for me, ten thousand bucks at seventeen hundred two hundred dollars, uh, twenty eight thousand gross minus seventeen two is ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Uh, this is profit that goes into the corporation, that goes into our business, that pays things like the tires for my pickup, my salary, my uh, 
you know, insurance, pays electric bill in the office up here, you know, blah, blah, blah. I've already been through this. If you were a, uh, a fellow that uh, worked in the factory, wanted to buy an old lease, didn't care about having insurance, just went out there and winged it, you know, you could probably make about a thousand bucks a month off this lease, something like that. Another thing I'd like to talk about, real briefly, not, not in detail, but the cost of plugging these wells. For some reason, you read on the internet and it's these huge inflated numbers. I don't, I don't know why that comes from, where that comes from or what the point of that is, but you know that, I didn't get, I was gonna take a picture of it and talk, but I forgot while I was out there, that, that well we worked on in the previous video, that, that Jensen back there in the corner. Um, it's still making crystal clear water. I don't expect it to ever make a rainbow and uh, it's probably gonna get plugged next year. I'm gonna run it for a while. There's not a lot of cost in this. So I think that I spent, including the tubing I bought and the stuffing box and all that crap and the well servicing, uh, I spent about 5,000 bucks on that well, something like that you tried out. It's not a lot of money. Of course, if you did that every day, you'd be broke, but it's, it's you know, not, uh, it's, it's not a unreasonable amount of money to try something like that. So when I go to plug this thing, uh, I've already spent 5,000 bucks on it. The cost of the well service and to pull the, everything out of it probably is going to run about $1,000. to come out and pull the rods, pull the pump, pull the tubing, the stuffing box, the new connections I put on it, all that stuff is still just as valuable as when I bought it to me. Now, you couldn't sell it for that, but to me it's worth you know, not having to buy another one. It still has all of its value that I paid for it. And it'll be used elsewhere. Um, that well is four and a half. It's small casing. It's wrapped up with cement. The casing is cemented from the bottom all the way to the surface. Um, it's one of the cheapest wells that you can plug. Uh, and I probably can get that plug. They'll, they'll run in with a poly spool, a poly pipe at the bottom. Uh, they'll set a 20 sack plug, 20 sacks of cement in the bottom. Uh, it'll probably have to have an intermediate plug about 1400. And then they'll, they'll plug like 250 foot to surface or something like that. It'll have three strings or three plugs of cement with drilling mud in between the plugs of cement. And I'll probably get this done, water truck, cement, pump truck, plug, everything for around a little over 2,000 bucks, $2,200, something like that. So even with paying for the well servicing to pull everything back out of it, the equipment that I'll get out of it will pay for having it plugged. You know, it's not, uh, it's not a scenario, a lot of people get this idea that, you know, you've got these old junk wells and you just put them off and put them off and put them off because uh, you don't want to pay to plug them. I actually will at least break even, if not be money ahead, to, uh, to get rid of that well. So I hope I showed enough reality to, uh, to kind of show reality. You know, a lot of y'all ask me questions specifically about numbers. What do things cost? How much money do you make? And I, and I hope I showed enough of, you know, how this, how this works, where the money goes. Um, you know, show reality and see how it is. You know, we make a living. We're certainly not getting rich. Uh, it's just uh, it's just another job. You get up every day and work your butt off, and uh, at the end of the month you get a paycheck. Just like anything else. It's not like it was in the 70s when the price oil was high and everything else was cheap. You know, everybody got rich, but it's not uh, not that way anymore. I'm done rattling. I appreciate you watching. Um, not sure what, not sure what we'll do next week. I've got a bunch of videos in the works. I need to finish some stuff up and uh, whatever it is, catch you next time.